When you watch your first destruction slash rigid body tutorial, they're gonna show you how to make something like this and say, wow, it's so advanced and call it a day. No, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this, which is more advanced, it has more layers of simulation, and it will probably teach you how physics works a bit better inside of Blender. So let's start with the easy case and then get to the hard case. So this is how they're gonna show you how to do it. So mini tutorial here. Take your object that you want to destroy. In my case, it's gonna be a cube and also make a collision object. This is what it's gonna fall on. So uh, with your plane, go to physics, make it a rigid body, make it passive. This is so it doesn't move when I hit play. Whereas the cube is just gonna be a rigid body uh, set to active and you can see it's falling. To get this thing to destroy, what they're gonna tell you to do is enable cell fracture. Uh, the add-on. Anyways, you're gonna apply cell fracture and pick some settings they tell you to do, like increase the noise, maybe not by that much. Make sure there's recursion, random, I'm just gonna set this to random, click OK. Uh, the point is, you get a fracture that looks something like that, and then you say for each of these, make them a rigid body. So I'm selecting all of them, click add rigid bodies, which will do it to all of them, and then boom, destruction, end of tutorial. The issue with this is it looks too simple, the chunks are too big, there's no detail, and it doesn't feel interesting. So, in this tutorial, we're gonna do better. So, uh, let's save this file. I'm gonna call it Better Destruction. Of course, what I'm gonna make is gonna be available on Patreon. And we do actually start the same way. We have a cube or whatever object you want it to destroy. Uh, we're going to start with a plane, but this time we're going to do a few things different. First of all, uh, for your plane, I'm going to extrude it downwards. This is so it has some thickness and responds better. Uh, Recenter this, so set origin to geometry because it's a bit thicker. Control A, apply rotation and scale. Uh, what this does is it makes rotation 0 and scale 1. Before, we had a scale of 10. It matters for physics. Okay, so... Uh, for the plane, again, rigid body, if it's set to active, it will fall, so I'm going to make it passive and make the cube an active rigid body, so it starts the same way. In fact, we're going to even divide it the same way, but from that point on, it starts deviating. So, uh, in your add-ons, if you don't have self-fracture, make sure to enable it, and then you'll see an option for self-fracture. Here are the settings we care about. So, the noise is basically saying how distorted our our chunks are going to be. So if the noise is zero, as you would expect, it just makes cubes, right? And that's a bit much. So I'm going to set noise to let's say 50%. I'm also gonna set recursion to one. What that does is if we divide pieces, it will then divide those pieces. So you see, now it's further dividing things. Um, other than that, I'm gonna set the source to random so it doesn't just divide the smallest pieces over and over again, which in fact will be glitchy or maybe we can set it to big. Let's see what that looks like. So it's gonna divide the biggest chunks and that looks pretty good to me, okay? So only other thing I'm going to change is I'm gonna add two levels of recursion, maybe increase the probability that something gets recursed on and click okay. So it's gonna take a second to uh, divide. By the way, just a little tip, uh, if you show progress real time and disable that, it's going to be much faster because it doesn't show the animation. Okay, so if you're lucky, you get a good fracture. And uh, I'm going to call that good. Okay, next order of business is we want these uh, pieces to drop. So again, same thing. You're going to add rigid bodies to all of this. And then not much more interesting than our original result. So how do we do better? First of all, uh, you take all of these objects, by the way, let's get rid of the stuff we don't need, take all of these objects, and the first interesting thing we can do is we can run the connect command. So make sure they have rigid bodies, click uh, connect. This adds a bunch of what we're going to call rigid body constraints. You go through all of these, and they have some settings. Uh, when you run the simulation, it kind of acts like a cube again. This is because what connect does is it literally connects the pieces so they can't scatter from each other in theory. Uh, before we do that, by the way, every time you undo, you kind of run the risk of a crashing blunder uh, because physics. Uh, I'm gonna set origin to geometry so that these are centered. I'm now going to run the connect command and to make sure that they aren't fully connected, 
select all of your constraints. One of them should be active and enable breakable and make sure uh, to right click and copy to select it. So what I'm saying is one of my constraints is gonna be breakable. And now I'm saying, take that property, make it apply to all of them. And let's see if that changes anything. It may or may not. Okay, it doesn't. The reason is, yes, you can break the connection, but they're kind of too strong together. So take your threshold of how connected they are, bring it down. The smaller, the more likely they are to break. Copy to selected, and now, okay, now they kind of shatter, but you get some pieces that are a bit bigger, right? Uh, which I think is more interesting. So let's actually bring this down even further. And the more you do this, the more it's going to break apart. And honestly, that is fine, but let's just see what we can do here. Copy to selected, and you can just run the simulation a bunch of times. That looks pretty interesting. I think what I'm going to do is half of them are gonna be on three, and if I have my constraints selected, you can actually select random. So here's another tip you wouldn't find in others. Click select random, but instead of select random, hit deselect. What that does is it takes your selection and removes, you know, however many. So maybe I'll remove this many, and then for these ones, I'm going to bring up the threshold and then copy to selected so that some of these have a threshold of four, but one of these has a threshold of three. Let's run this. Okay, that looks a bit more interesting to me. Okay, one other thing you can do, of course, is you can just kind of restart your simulation in a different position uh, to get different kinds of results. So let's just find something we like here. That looks pretty interesting to me. Okay, so this is our simulation. Only other thing is this plane clearly uh, needs to be bigger so that pieces don't fall off. And there's our simulation. You see the pieces kind of slide like ice, which is kind of weird. Uh, to fix that, take your collision object being this floor, go to your surface response, basically the settings of it, increase the friction all the way and just add some bounciness, which We'll now have some of these pieces bouncing, but they don't go uh, forever. Okay, cool. So let's say we're happy with the simulation. All you need to do is you need to say that we are going to cache this. And let's make this only 100 frames. We can cache or we can bake. I'm just gonna hit bake. And all that does is it gives us our simulation, but we don't need to uh, rerun it each time. It's actually uh, set in stone which is funny because it looks like uh, we're dropping stones. Now, in theory, if I delete these constraints, it shouldn't matter. It, yeah, it shouldn't matter because we already have our bacon, so it's not gonna change any settings. So I'm just gonna get rid of these constraints now uh, to get a cleaner workspace and boom. Okay, already something more interesting. Now, I wanna add layers on top of this but the issue is uh, if I add simulations on top of this, it's gonna undo the first one. So we somehow need to preserve the simulation, but then add on top of it. Easy way to do this, select your objects that again are simulated. And we want to say, take the simulation and make it an animation in some sense so that we don't have to re-simulate again and again. So uh, I think it's called bake action. What this does is it lets you kind of keyframe everything. So I don't know which of these we need, so I'm gonna select all of them. And you can see now every single object has these uh, keyframes. And additionally, we should now be able to get rid of all these rigid bodies in some sense. So let's see, I'm going to remove rigid bodies. So now none of these are rigid bodies yet, it still plays the exact same animation because each piece is actually animated now, as you can see. Okay, so we have our simulation, and now we have to ask ourselves, what do we wanna to do to make this more interesting? Well, uh, if you look at this big chunk here, it looks interesting, but it doesn't, you know, like I feel like the big chunk should explode into even tinier pieces. Well, how do we do that? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna isolate this section and add more simulation on top. So to do that, I'm in fact gonna select everything except it, 
which I feel like will actually be an easier way to proceed. So now if I control I to invert, that should be all of them, okay? And I'm going to put these in a collection called big chunk. This is useful because now we know where all the pieces are that we care about. So other than that, I'm going to call our ground the ground. And then for the rest of these, I'm going to put them in a collection called small chunks. Okay, so we've separated this into two kind of uh, containers here. Okay, uh, for now, the small chunks I'm not going to touch, but the big chunks I want to do something with. Okay, so maybe what we can do is let's turn it into a single object on collision. So it collides right about here. And on this frame, I want to take all these big chunks and uh, turn them into a single object. So uh, select all for this collection. So now you can see we have these objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of these. Okay, so I have my own copy. For those, I'm going to delete every keyframe after 23. So what you can imagine is this one freezes, whereas the original one keeps moving. So this one's kind of frozen. And on frame 23, making sure one of these uh, that we selected is active. Although I do struggle to do this. Okay, one of these is active, hit control J to join them. And now it is a single object. And let me tell you the theory of what's going on here. I'm going to delete these uh, keyframes. The theory of what's going on here is we have our original simulation that is uh, in two different chunks, right? But now we also have this object that represents the state that it is on collision. So in fact, let's go to that object and remove it from the big, big chunk category. And I'm just going to call this joined where I'm going to set origin to geometry. So it's nice and centered. And there we go. So now we've frozen the state on frame 23 uh, so that we can do more interesting things with it. Okay, so at frame 23, we should swap with this one so we don't have this thing falling, etc. Okay, how do we do? Well, uh, the collection here basically dictates whether or not we see the other chunks. So if we keyframe it, can we keyframe it? Seems like not so simple. Uh, let's do a trick. Okay, so we want to have the big chunks enabled and then disabled so you don't see them. Here's a cool trick that is simulation on top of simulation. We're going to add a random object and I'm going to call this object GeoNodes, which will give you a hint as to what I'm doing. I'm going to disable big chunks so we don't see it. And I'm also going to disable joined. So we only have every other fragment. For this GeoNodes, I'm going to go into geometry nodes. I'm going to enable this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the entire collection into a single object so we can enable and disable it. Very simple. You go to collection info, and then you say, what collection do I want to display? I want to display the big chunk. Okay. So you can see this object now represents this, right? And I don't think the settings matter all too much. Uh, the cool thing about this is now on frame 23, where I want to swap it with the joined, I can disable it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable a switch node, which if I get rid of this, I'm switching between having the collection and not having it, right? So before I'm going to keyframe it here. Afterwards, I'm going to keyframe it here. So now we've basically toggled the visibility. So if I watch this, boom. Of course, I want to do the opposite, the opposite with the joined, right? So with the uh, joined group, uh, we can actually keep that very simple uh, for our visibility on frame 22 it should be invisible and then on frame 23 it should be visible the reason we're doing it different for different uh, sections um, is that uh, is that uh, it's not as easy to isolate a collection so what we've effectively done here is frozen the big chunk uh, which makes it easy now to do simulation on top of simulation for it. Okay, so when joined appears on frame 23, I want this to further explode. Well, let's put this in here. 
um, well, I'm going to call this explode instead of join now. A uh, quick way to do this is you run a quick explode uh, command on the object. You can see what that does is it does this weird thing, but we're going to be able to actually uh, control this. Okay. But you can see it takes our object and further refines it and subdivides it. Uh, what's actually happening under the scenes here is we're having a particle system that dictates how this explodes. Okay. We could have done this manually, but whatever. So let's keep this simple. I'm going to look at our explode object. What this does, if you look under the scenes, is on frame 23, which happens to be the one where we froze it. It's going to be the frame where you triggered quick explode. On only frame 23, it's going to spawn 100 particles. And based on those 100 particles, we are going to subdivide the mesh. And then it's going to basically inherit its particle physics. An easy way to think about this is if we display these as halos, you can see our particle system basically spawns here, and then there's chunks that are linked to it, okay? Uh, but there's a couple things we want. First of all, it kind of looks weird when it starts. Simple fix, enable rotation. Or at least it should be an easy fix, let's see. So, boom. Doesn't like that too much. Maybe what we can do is we can actually trigger this on frame 24, so it has time to reference exactly, time to reference what the object looked like. So now it is dividing, but it starts in the same orientation, which looks a bit more natural. Another thing to consider is that they're going through the floor, of course. Uh, particles do not respect, not very cool. It doesn't respect rigid bodies. We can actually get rid of this. To make it collide with particles, we actually need a collision. So now our floor is a collision and you can see we're getting something here. Looks weird, but we are getting it. And what we need to do is we need to fix kind of the glitchiness here. So first of all, the particles seem to disappear after a while. And this is again, because all of this quick explode is dependent on particles. They only have a lifetime of 50. I'm gonna bump that up. Okay. And uh, let's actually hide uh, these particles now. So it's easier to see, okay. So now they're bouncing. However, it does look very, you know, they're bouncing too much. Uh, easy fix for this is on the collision object. Now we have all these settings for particles. I'm going to increase dampening. What dampening does is it says, how much does it kill the velocity? So now you can see it's acting a bit different here. Okay. And then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the friction so it doesn't slide as far. So there we go. Uh, to make it more dynamic, I'm going to randomize both of these a little. So let's bring that down, bring that down. You just play with this until you like the look of it. Okay. Of course, we have some glitchiness that we, we seem to need to fix here. Uh, but you see, this is kind of generally what's going on here. Okay. So at this point, let's actually isolate our, our particle thing. Why is it looking so weird? Well, we haven't picked the right settings. And additionally, what, what's it doing? It's basically cutting up our mesh based on particles. And if we look at our mesh, really bad geometry here, right? So if we improve our geometry, I expect to see better results. So before the particle system, which then leads to an explosion, by the way, we can get rid of uh, that. That doesn't matter too much. Before any of that happens, I actually want to change the geometry. So I'm actually just going to remesh it, keep it simple. You can see now we have somewhat, you know, cleaner geometry in a sense. If you wanted to kind of preserve the way it looked, go to sharp, which will, eh, it will look a bit weird, but it has more geometry. You can increase the depth, which will, you know, it will, it will make it look better. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, when you're happy with this, hit control A. So now actually this mesh looks like this, which we then run particles and explode on. So at minimum, it should look different. And actually you can see it's no longer glitchy because it seems like the issue was the kind of the way it uh, divided these weird geometries. Okay. So at this point, we can actually decide what we want to do with this. So instead of 100 particles, do we want to divide it into only five sections, right? You get the choice. Well, 
For now, let's divide it into 30 particles. We can decide later. And one thing I'm seeing here is yes, it does split right, but it doesn't seem to, you know, rotate and explode and all of this. So uh, let's initialize it. The particles burst with some initial velocity. What do I want to do here? Well, let's say I want to increase the normal. This shoots it out from the mesh. And then I'm going to increase the randomized. This sends it in random direction. So now it's a bit more dynamic. Okay. But uh, another thing that makes these look weird is they're very static, right? They're not rotating. And this is where it gets a bit glitchy, but we'll see what we can do. In rotation, you see we have an option for dynamic. What that does is now they rotate a little at the cost of being a bit glitchy. And additionally, you can see when they're on the floor, they kind of keep rotating and sliding. So not a guarantee that we can make this work, but let's try. First of all, instead of uh, velocity being the axis of rotation, let's set it to random so they're not all the same. Not necessarily physically accurate. Dear God, <laughs> you know what? I'm setting it back to velocity. Uh, but uh, one thing we can do to stabilize this, this rotation, is we're going to set the angular velocity to zero so it stops rotating it. So this way, it seems like we get the benefit of a bit of rotation but without necessarily kind of that thing going on before. Although it seems like we're still kind of getting this glitchiness. Okay. So maybe what we can do is we can kind of keyframe this dynamicness. Seems like we can't. Well, this I did say this is where it gets glitchy. I'm just gonna play with settings until it doesn't break as much necessarily. Um, I am just going to randomize phase. What we hope for is that this still divides nicely. Hmm, doesn't seem to like that. We play with settings until we can't play with settings no more. Okay, so it seems like the issue here is it is only simulating after a frame, whatever. Easy way to fix this is you kind of refresh this by just kind of moving it up and down. And hopefully, there we go, start simulating again. Okay, we're again somewhere. Again, if this is not working, we can actually just disable dynamic and I'll show you another way to rotate it because that seems to be pretty glitchy. Okay, so we now have this exploding and inside of the context of having a ground, having the geo nodes, which again is this dropping part and having our big chunks. No, we don't want the big chunks. Having our small chunks, you can see it looks like this. Um, it seems like our explosion division is kind of like the, the particles are too big. So easy, this is dynamic. I can just increase the number to 100. And now we get our big chunks. So let's see where our big chunks are. Where, where, where's our chunks? What is going on here? Oh, they're all invisible. Okay, now we get the best of both worlds. We have the explosion, we have the geo nodes, boom. So we have big chunks and we have small chunks. And that way it's not only colliding with the ground, but also these chunks. So we're just adding layers and layers of complexity. Of course, our simulation's not gonna care about this change because we baked it. So we could try to update it, see if it looks good or not. We delete bake, we rerun the uh, simulation. And in theory, now it should be, yeah, you see this one bounces back right? Should be respecting this. Of course, this bounce back's a bit extreme. So I'm going to go to the collision that seems to do that. And if I select our objects, I can bring up the dampening to let's say 0.5, copy to selected, increase the friction, copy to selected. And now we hope it's not going to be as extreme. Okay, but it does seem to now respect it somewhat better than not having it. So you can see this particle, this particle around here. If you look at it, it bounces off, which is kind of cool. Okay, either way, either way, let's add layers of complexity on top of this. So our simulation, we can say we're happy with this. By the way, mm, you know what, I was gonna say we could break this over time, which is true. But let's not overcomplicate things at least now. So now, just to preview this a bit better, I'm going to show cavity and shadow. 
Shadow's going to be a bit glitchy, but it looks better in uh, Cycles. Now we got something a bit more interesting. Okay. So, we have more layers of complexity. Definitely looks better than the initial. But we again have this issue where it kind of looks a little plain still. So can we add even more layers of abstraction here? Well, what if when this collides, it shoots up a bunch of dust? Not volumetric dust, but like little rock particles and stuff like that. Okay, well, let's say we wanted to do that. Uh, I'm going to start, let's say, with the small chunks. So the small chunks generate particles. Again, it would kind of be a pain to do this for every single small chunk object. So we actually already know the trick. So I'm going to call this geo nodes big. I'm going to add another geo nodes object. I'm going to call this geo nodes small. And what this is going to be responsible for is showing this uh, collection as a single object in some sense. So what I can do is I can go to geometry nodes, make a geo nodes group, and just like before, this one is responsible for representing the small chunks. So now you can see them as a single object, which makes it good for spawning particles. Uh, by the way, currently this is an instance, so you want to realize this, so it's actual geometry. This is what I can spawn some particles off of. So if I look at our... So notice we got rid of the initial two categories and uh, just turned them into some GeoNodes object. Uh, this is what we can run particles off of after the GeoNodes. So let's add a particle system. I'm going to call this like spray. So you can see uh, we have spray underneath GeoNodes. And um, by the way, this isn't going to work the way you think it does, at least initially. But let's say we want this to start spawning particles on frame 22, and it keeps spawning particles until like frame 34. So like there's some dust coming off of this. Uh, this will be 22 to 34. However, when we play this, we don't really see anything. Let's see what that is responsible for. Yeah, we should be seeing them in a viewport. Uh, some issues here. Well, it's trying to spawn particles off of the geometry. But technically, there is no geometry, right? There, there's just kind of the cube, if I get rid of this, which you can see now spawns particles, no problem. This is because we now have this GeoNodes thing, and it doesn't really know where those chunks are, so it doesn't know where those particles should be. Simple fix. In our spray source, where it's emitting from, set uh, use modifier stack to enable. And now you can see it actually follows our chunks and adds a bit of a spray here. So again, use modifier stack means it looks behind it or on top of it in the modifier stack and it cares about that. Again, let's make these a bit more interesting. So definitely bump up the randomness. Let's see what this looks like. Boom, a lot of particles. Just kind of sprays them, which will look better when we make them smaller. In fact, just as a bit of a bit of a uh, thing here. Just gonna make these a bit smaller so uh, it looks a bit better. Uh, you can see this adds yet another layer of complexity. So uh, how do I want to treat this? Well, I'm gonna increase the normal, the tangent, it doesn't really matter. You just want it to be more chaotic. Okay, and what I would actually recommend to visually make this look better, of course, uh, is to add more particles. However, However, and by the way, these should live longer. However, uh, the more particles we add, yes, the better it looks in my opinion. However, it kind of takes longer to simulate. So let me show you a trick. So let's say we're happy with a thousand particles and we can bake this. Uh, before we do that, I want it to be a disk cache. So it's baking from frame uh, 22, or it's spawning between 22 and 34 and then the lifetime exists. This looks good, however, however, these particles, eh, there aren't enough of them, and I guess they aren't reacting enough. Uh, first of all, let's handle not having enough without re-simulating. If you go all the way down, I hope this works, there's a children option. If I set this to simple, does it care? Does it care? What this should do is it should look at particles that exist and put particles in between particles, in a sense. Uh, but before we do that, I think I know why this is an issue. 
I'm going to set this to object so it doesn't render as little halos, right? Like little weird dots. And I want this to actually have some kind of like, you know, rock looking particle thing. To do this, I'm going to go to UV sphere. I'm going to go to UV sphere. This is going to be our particle. And I'm just going to mess this up a bit. So you can think about this as our uh, rock over here. Doesn't need to be great. They're going to be super small. So this is going to be our rock. And what I want to say, so I'm going to call this rock, is that every single particle is going to inherit this. So again, I'm running this off of the small chunks. To get this visible, go to go to render, if I can find render, and set it to object, and choose the, what did I call it? I called it rock particle. So now each of these is going to have a little rock, but the cool thing about this is I can actually randomize it, so they're not all the same size, and it seems now that the children's actually working, which is cool. Okay, so I'm going to randomize the size of these initial particles, and of course, I'm going to bring down the overall size maybe by even more. And they're all rotated the same way. So I believe if I enable rotation, of course, it seems like we need to uh, delete the bake to free this. So I'm going to enable rotation, maybe randomize it a little, randomize the phase a little. What I hope, yeah, is now they're not all facing the same way. So boom, now we have something extra. Again, uh, we get some free detail without necessarily re-simulating by using children. I guess you need to have object enabled for this. So let's use children. To do this, you go to children. I'm going to set it to simple. And now we get more of these for free. But you can see they kind of look a little weird, right? And some of them are floating. Uh, this is because, yes, these create more of them, but... Eh, they're, they're kind of very linked to the original. And we do have control over this. We can have the radius that these uh, scatter on. I don't want this radius to be too big, although now you can see these particles are kind of like bunched together. You can pick some settings here. I want these to be close. The reason being is otherwise they're going to float on top. But it seems like, by the way, I'm going to set render to 10, so it's the same number of particles. But again, it seems like we do need some more influencing particles. So I'm going to maybe triple this again. Uh, whatever we do, we're going to get, instead of 3,000, we're going to get 30,000 particles for basically free, okay? Because we're multiplying by 10. To make it look better, I'm going to decrease this to 5. So this is without, this is with. We just got to play around with some settings until it looks okay. And I think the rest of these, by the way, are for um, mainly for hair. But we can also randomize the size of the children, which seems pretty good. So maybe these children should be a bit smaller. So these are like particles influenced by the particles. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm just going to do one more round. Again, even if I'm simulating more, we're getting a five times, in this case, boost for free. So let's simulate 10,000 particles, but get 50,000 as a return. So you can see it's still simulating pretty quickly. Boom. There we go. And without children, with children. I'm just going to increase this a little. Okay. So I think I'm happy with this. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to decrease it a little. And let's see what this looks like. I guess we don't have a camera. So this thing explodes, and there's particles, and then there's the explosion chunks. And that looks good. OK, uh, let's go even crazier. Uh, what I'm going to do is this explosion, the explosion, remember, looks like this. It can also have particles, right? So we made particle system, we exploded it, we solidified it for thickness, but on top of this, I can add another particle system, so I'm going to call this spray explode. And I don't need to make this from scratch because we can take our previous system, which seems to be called particle settings 001, 
You, we could have named it, but it's a little too late now. I'm going to set it to the same thing, but I don't necessarily want it to have the exact same settings. I just want it to use the same initial settings. Hit 2 to basically unlink this. So it's a different particle system, but with the same settings. I'm going to initially bring this down so it's not as many particles. And I think the difference here is instead of spawning till frame 35, I want an initial big burst until frame like 30 and we can change some settings. So initially I want these to really kick up. So I'm gonna add some upwards velocity on the Z. This should be even, should be even more randomized, I'm gonna decide. And then boom, we get even more particles kicked up. That looks good. Um, okay, what do I wanna change about this? I want these particles to kind of be bigger chunks because they're coming from a different source and I can see these ones are bigger, which kind of creates the issue of these children kind of being a bit too apparent. So I'm just gonna, eh, I'm gonna bump up the particles with our simulation. I'm gonna say I'm happy with this. I'm gonna run a bake. And then I'm just gonna change some of the children settings. We can kind of get away with there being so much stuff going on that it will kind of be hard to see. So clearly we have kind of children that are too obviously uh, copies of each other. So I'm gonna increase the radius by a little. Again, this is gonna make them float just a little, but hopefully not too much. Okay. And then I am going to increase the randomness. So this is without, and then this is with. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna play this and boom, right? There's definitely more to do, but doesn't this look uh, more interesting? There we go. So do I want to add even more stuff on top of this? I could. One obvious thing is to add some smoke, maybe some turbulence, but I'm trying to think. I think the weakest part of this is the small chunks over here. So I need to ask myself, what can I do to improve the look of these chunks? Maybe instead of being these clean pieces, they can be more interesting, right? So remember, this might not be the way to go, but I'm just gonna hide the particles for now. Remember, uh, we kind of outsourced this to a collection that we realized, etc. We could do more with this. So I wonder if we subdivide it, if that's gonna work. So I'm gonna subdivide mesh. Yeah, before, after. I'm gonna run a bit more of this. So it has more geometry. Why am I doing this? Because now I can distort it. And hopefully this sticks on. It won't actually, uh, but let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna set position and I'm going to offset the noise, offset the position with a noise texture. So you can see now these are a bit weirder, although you can see they're kind of glitchy, which is what I was getting at. But before we write this off, I'm going to take our noise and center it so it's from negative 0.5 to 0.5. That's why I'm subtracting. And then I'm gonna scale this by a tinier amount. One second. You know when you get like a dried mucus thing, it's kind of like a thin but developed sheet and it kind of makes you choke, that's what's going on here. So before, after, the issue is this noise is kind of position based in the global position system, but I don't know if that's gonna matter. I don't know if it's gonna matter. Either way, let's increase the detail here. And I mean, that should look better if it does indeed stay on, if it does indeed stay on. However, you can see initially they do have this, so I want to kind of animate when these show up cool thing about this is because it's geonode base, I can make it gradual. So it starts with a zero and then over a couple frames, we start kind of revealing this, but you're not going to notice because there's so much going on here. So let's see. And boom. Okay. Definitely looking better. Uh, but with the issue 
I don't know if you can tell, but the distortion's not moving with the rocks. It's not moving with the rocks. And this is because we don't have a position coordinate system. I wonder if we actually have, we might not, we might not, but I wonder if we have a UV map. We do. Let's see what this does when I connect it. Eh. So it seems like only some of these faces have a UV map, which is expected because we took the original cube. It's almost what I want. What I want is actually the exact opposite, it turns out. But now these do stick. So I'm wondering, there's a way to fix this. We can use uh, simulation nodes, but I'm wondering, do we do it? Eh, we do it, we do it. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to run simulation nodes. The reason for this, the reason for this is I wanna have an initial coordinate system that propagates, that propagates. Uh, let me disable all this, disable this. Now it should be more obvious how the distortion doesn't really follow it. Uh, this is something I want to fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a simulation zone. Okay, so I'm going to feed in. Hmm. I guess it is going to be a little tricky, isn't it? Because now, let's see what we got. Now these are going to be frozen in time, aren't they? Yeah. Um, let me think about what I want to do here. I want to have an initial coordinate system, but without the cost of simulation nodes. Let me think about this. Okay, I've decided we're going to get a little fancy. So uh, the nice thing about this is, yes, we have our particles, but the moment we run it through a simulation zone, okay, so we have this, we're running it through a simulation zone, it's going to freeze on the first frame, which is weird. The reason is, it feeds this in on frame one, and then from then on, it's just gonna loop this. It doesn't get new information. So it's gonna be stuck on frame one. So somehow, what I wanna do is have the simulation zone update so it carries this information. And here's what I think I'm going to do. This is gonna be weird, but follow, follow my lead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the position of this updating thing and I want it to update to the position of the initial condition. It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. Here's what it's going to be. I'm going to sample the index of a vector. Okay. So I'm basically sampling information of a vector. What information do I want? On every frame, I want to sample the position of what of our initial condition. So I know this is confusing. I will explain this right now. I'll explain this right now. So what I'm doing is I'm saying on every frame, sample every single point and store its position, right? From uh, this thing that we had, it's going to store the position on every single frame. And even though this is looping and not updating, I should just be able to connect the position here. And now let's see if that works. Yeah, so it's working. So this is without the simulation zone. This is with the simulation zone. But the reason, it, it's the exact same thing visually, but the reason I'm doing this, the big difference here, the big difference here is now I can actually store an initial condition that should propagate into the future. So let's see, I'm gonna store named attribute. This is gonna be a vector. And what I wanna do is store the initial position. I'm gonna call this initial and hopefully, so now if we look at this, uh, information, you can see this position is copied exactly to initial. But even though the position changes over here, right on every frame, the initial stays the same. How do you visualize this, right? This will help. Well, if I visualize this, right, so I'm going to take the simulation, I'm going to view it, and I'm going to show this initial condition, making sure that this is a point but it needs to be set to vector. Okay, here we go. So this is our initial position, but now it's moving with it, okay? In contrast, in contrast to what? To this, okay? So notice how this isn't really mapping to it. it might be hard to tell, but it is not mapping onto it. Notice how this chunk is blue in this section, but as it plays, as it plays, what happens, it kind of becomes this greenish. It doesn't preserve. 
whereas with this version, it totally preserves. Great. So all of that is to say is now what I can do is I can bake the simulation zone. Really all we're baking is this initial position thing. And the reason we're doing that is now we're going to have a constant coordinate system for this noise thing is kind of the point. So now we don't have to do much else. We just take this previous system and run it. Okay, so it looks exactly the same, but this time the chunks, okay, they don't stay with it, but that's because we forgot to use our coordinate system. Now, if we set this to initial, you can see the chunks, the distortion stays with it. Great. Okay, that was a lot. So I'm going to enable the ground. I'm going to enable the, what is rock? I don't remember what rock represents. I don't know what that means. Either way, I'm going to enable this. I'm going to enable explode. And now, whoa, we have everything we had before, but with the benefit, with the benefit of our um, kind of distorted chunks here. I think the issue is, did it update our particles here? Right, we should have a particle system coming off of this. Hmm. Uh, I visualized this. Okay, it kept our particles. So now, hopefully you don't notice this transition in practice. And by the way, to blur the position or to kind of average it out, uh, we can literally blur a, a field-like position. So this is before and after. We can run a few iterations, although that seems to... Ugh not be the greatest. I wonder, by the way, I wonder if we merge by distance. Yeah, that seems to help. I'm basically attaching pieces that weren't before. Eh. So ba basically, I, I think you can see what I'm getting at. I'm trying to change the overall position, but now it's looking a little cringe, right? But I think it was looking better than it did. So I'm going to add this, okay? And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a second layer of noise. This is on changing. So I'm going to set position again. Same thing. But instead of literally the same thing, let me keyframe this. So this can be at zero. And then this can be at, you know, whatever number. Uh, this one is going to have more detail. So something like that, and I think I think I want to do this after the blurring. Sorry for all the complexity, but that's the reality. I'm going to attach this afterwards. So yeah, there we go. Now we get this um, additional kick of detail, which obviously shouldn't be so strong, and maybe something like that. Okay, I think this looks better than the original. Um, only other thing, only other thing is you can see, yes, this kind of distorts over time, uh, but the blurring kind of happens forever, and we can just bring down the weight of that, right, to simulate it. So I can have this be here, and then a few frames down, bring in our blurring, maybe only by 70%. So this is going to be normal chunks, and then we secretly add in a hit of detail, which will have our particles, which will have other pieces. And let's see what that looks like. And the ground for context. Should look a bit better. Let's see what the original looked like. Yeah, it kind of looked very flat. Kind of looked very flat. So th I, I think this is a bit better. Maybe smooth it a little less. Maybe make this a little less extreme. The cool thing about this is you can see when we add a layer of simulation nodes on top, we can kind of, you know, go back and forth. But I think that this meticulous whatever we're doing is good enough. Final piece. <laughs> uh, I want to simulate smoke on top of all of this. On top of all of this. Yeah. Okay, so we can get rid of big, or you know what, let's keep it. 
basically what I want to do, I know I'm getting complicated, is I want to simulate smoke, but only on impact frame 22, and it should move with these fragments and everything. So let's add another geo nodes, hopefully. So this is going to be our smoke emitter. And smoke emitter shouldn't care about particles or anything like this. Um, and hopefully we can do that. So for the smoke emitter, okay, we have nested geo nodes. I'm going to now not import in a collection unless we do want to import in a collection. Whatever. Take all these objects. I'm going to call this smoke collection. Okay, so this collection represents, you know, everything we love. And the smoke emitter, just like the other ones, are going to bring in this collection. Hopefully they don't bring in the particles. So now we can see that. Okay, so we have everything, I guess, including the particles here. But the difference is, hopefully if I realize this, great, I got rid of the particles. So now what I have, perfect. Boom, on frame, I don't know, I guess on frame 22. And I know there's those like relics behind, Let, let's hide those. But on frame 22, we want this to be our smoke emitter. Okay, let's see what we can do. So for our smoke emitter, uh, we could play with settings or we can just say quick smoke. Uh, what this is going to do is it's gonna add a smoke domain that should, in theory, let us run a smoke sim. Let's see. So with our smoke domain, go to physics. It's going to have a bunch of smoke settings. All I am going to change is for frame start, I want it to be frame 22. So on frame 22, there we go. It starts simulating. And then, I don't know, keeps going. I mean, clearly there's some chunks that are going out of bounds here. So what you want to do is make sure your simulation zone is big enough to contain everything, but you want to make it as small as possible so that we don't simulate a bunch of empty space. So something like that, something like that, and the smoke's really going to help blend stuff in. So now if I play this, we get boom, and, and we are going to hide that initial stuff, don't worry. Uh, we have our smoke. Uh, but we want it to look better in a bunch of ways. So first of all, the smoke never goes away. Just doesn't. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to add a dissolve property, which should make it hide over time. So let's see, we get smoke. And then it should hide and get weaker over time. It does. It's a little subtle, but it does. And then we can add noise for extra detail. And now we're going to get to the point where I'm going to hit bake and then cut to when I'm done. But uh, these are just kind of like loose settings. In fact, uh, we only need to simulate to like frame 80, since I think I'm going to shorten this whole composition. Uh, from 22 to 80, click all so we have this bake option. And I will be back in a second. But you can see it's going through the frames. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of working, kind of. Uh, but the issue is, a couple issues. One, it's very low resolution. And two, it just kind of keeps emitting smoke forever. So I kind of want there to be an initial burst of smoke and then it gets weaker. Well, easy to do. In Smoke Emitter, go to your flow source. This tells you how much smoke there is. Maybe let's have there be an emission of one, which is less than 1.5. And then over a few frames, like here, it just kind of stops emitting smoke. So this keyframe should do it. And while we're at it, while we're at it, there's still more settings to change, but let's bump up. By the way, at this point, we can hide our smoke emitter if we wanted to. But at this point, let's free up our bake, which we have to do every time, just like particles, and double the resolution. So I will be right back. Okay, so giant quality boost. Still not great, but you can see that it now kind of looks a little better. Well, <laughs> what can we do to make this uh, look even better? Well, you can see that each piece kind of has its smoke trail, but it's too perfect. Too perfect, and the smoke goes away too quickly. So, easy things we can do. In Dissolve, let's have it take a little longer. So the bigger the number, the more time. And then here's the secret, vorticity, 
is going to be the secret uh, to adding in detail. What vorticity means is that the smoke is going to rotate on itself, right? It does go up to four, but I find that that's ridiculous. So you want to keep it under one in this case. I'm going to make it 0.75. And what else do we want to change? We can change some emitter settings. Like we can have this spawn from like a uh, texture, which would basically mean there's kind of like noise dictating where it would spawn. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, for the smoke domain, okay, we added vorticity and we added some time. And is there much to it? Well, let's add one more thing. I'm going to add a force field, which will affect the total kind of power of this. I'm going to set this to turbulence, which will also distort this. And I'm just going to bring down the strength. So sad thing about this is you have to kind of do it over and over and over again. Be right back. Okay, so I can already tell this is much better. So on frame 22, it starts emitting smoke. Yeah, that seems to be more what we want. Okay. Okay, so I think at this point, all we need to do is a bit of a detail bump. However, uh, of course, I am seeing... By the way, what's going on here? Oh, I'm like, why, why is this looking so weird? Um, I'm just... This is weird. This shouldn't be the shape of it. I'm just going to increase it so it includes our entire simulation. Hopefully it figures out what I mean by that. Maybe I can kind of guide it. Um, other than that, I, th I think I like it. I think I like it. So once you like it, uh, all you have to do is say, uh, keep everything the same, but just bring up the detail. And because we're going to render smoke not too powerfully, we don't have to get in the, into the two and three hundreds. Um, so I'm just going to bake this one last time and see where we go from there. Okay, it's done. I'm happy with it. So really at this point, the rest of the game is setting this up for a render, right? Um, and I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, it's a physics tutorial, but let me see if I can get you started. So Remember, all we care about for this kind of setup that we just did is we care about the smoke, but not really the emitter. In fact, it shouldn't be there. Uh, so it turns out we can actually hide the emitter, okay? And get the benefit of still having the smoke, right? So now what I can do is I can enable our smoke collection, which is everything else, remember? And now we have it all in one place. Uh, for the smoke domain, which I'm just going to rename uh, smoke, uh, what you would really do uh, is basically just change the density of this smoke. So if we go to shading, again, we're not really... Whew. <laughs> so this is a look dev, and, it's, <laughs> and we're not even in cycles yet. But all you would really do is you would change the density of it. So you get this material for free, you'd bring the density down, and you can even see in the viewport thing um, that that would affect it. So 5, 25, 1. And you can change some like settings here. But in general, once you take this thing and you render it with, um, you know, you render it with some like smoke and, or sorry, you render it with like cycles and all this, crazy times, crazy times. Uh, so like I said, um, do I want to render this right now? No. But can we do a viewport render? Yes. Uh, can I get... Eh, disgusting. So as you might be able to hear, my computer does not enjoy this uh, cycles render. But you can see how you might light this and it looks a bit better. And uh, the big thing I just wanted to say um, without rendering is enable motion blur. Dear God, enable motion blur. This is uh, what is going to make the simulation pop because there's so much you know stuff going on and whatever. Um, but for the rest, make sure that everything you're hiding is also not renderable. Um, and that should basically set you up for the rest of this. Uh, so I just wanted to give that tip for uh, rendering. But other than that, I mean, that's kind of the essence of it. Should I render one frame to just kind of 
give you a sense of like how long that would take. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna render one frame with optics and all of this. By the way, uh, when you're viewing this, set it to a wireframe, which will actually use less resources so you can uh, keep them all in the render. And you can also hide the smoke uh, while you are at it. So uh, let us try rendering a frame and see how bad the damage is. I mean, you'd hope it wouldn't be too bad. Most of it's going to be the volume. Okay, so it seems like the rendering's taken a long time, but it is because of the volume. So we can kind of simplify that just a little. So let me show you. Uh, it's using at maximum a step of a thousand, which means it's doing a lot of volume calculation. Drop that to 50, you know, just drop it. And you can also maybe bump this up. All you need to know is the bigger the number, uh, the lower the quality. And the lower the number here, uh, the lower the quality. Hopefully I said that right. So let me try that again. And what I hope is that the bottleneck, which is volume, uh, goes a bit faster. Okay, we have gotten to the point where it's at least a rendering. And I'll tell you that the um, volume calculation was much faster. But uh, you can see that it's resolving pretty quickly. And um, this happens to be a frame that doesn't actually have much volume because most of it has dissipated. Uh, but you can see it's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to show you one compositing tip uh, once this is done to speed things up. And I think the samples also start speeding up at a certain point. So do not fear. The render is almost here. Basically, I'm just going to show you how to overlay ambient occlusion. So uh, once this is done, go to compositing and let's view our render. You're gonna see that I have this ambient occlusion socket. The reason for this, I kept it secret, uh, is an I, I enabled ambient occlusion here. What this does, and I think it's very important for this, is it's gonna show ambient occlusion, which you can see really highlights everything, everything. So if I was to then mix it with ambient occlusion, the way you do this is you set it to multiply. Here's the before and the after. So if you really wanna highlight what you made, which I do, <laughs> uh, this is the way to go. And then finally, let's just pick, it, it's mainly black and white. Let me pick some settings that I enjoy. Something like that. And then let's just add tiny little barely compositing, right? I'm gonna add some lens distortion. I like negative 0.02 and then 0.02. Don't really worry about what it, means but here's before and after just add some chromatic aberration just barely and again you can bump the detail up by adding a sharpen but like ugh, maybe keep it softer before after might be the way to go okay i want to render one more frame with the smoke and the motion blur and this compositing so I'm going to find a good frame here. Remember, you're not seeing the smoke because I disabled it in the viewport. But let's do something like this. I'm actually gonna increase the motion blur because I think it's gonna look great. And let's see what this gives us. Okay, there you go. So you can see ambient occlusion really like makes it pop because I believe that ambient occlusion is also a thing of smoke. I don't know if that's true. Let's see, so initial render and then Fine, and then ambient occlusion, okay. So with that in mind, you know, ambient occlusion is really gonna darken your thing, which is fine, but just so you know. So before, after, and then the sharpening. So there you go, that is the tutorial. I don't think there's much else to talk about. Thank God I am recording. So uh, Patreon file, it's gonna be available, link in the description. Um, when you join Patreon, you don't just get this file, but you get everything I made over the last four years, uh, early access to tutorials, and it is the way to support what I do. So if you like these advanced tutorials that hopefully nobody else is doing, Patreon. For like a dollar, you get early access. For five dollars, you get four years worth of blend files, including this one, which in itself is worth five dollars. But that is what is going on, and I will see you on the next one.